There are six reasons to avoid applying for credit cards too often. It feels so good to get approved for that premium travel card with exclusive lounge access, I know. And it feels good to hit the sign-up bonus for a new card and use the money to pay off your entire trip to Vegas. But if you do this too often, if this behavior becomes excessive, it can lead to being disqualified for home loans, which are at a five decade high, by the way. It could even cause banks that you thought you were building a good long-term relationship with to suddenly slash your credit limits down to a few hundred bucks, or even worse, cancel your accounts without giving you a second chance. Getting approved for a mortgage is such an exhaustive process. There's so many steps and it really makes you want to punch the air on a weekly basis and quickly signing up for credit cards causes three major problems for this process. The financial choices that you make leading up to your mortgage application can really make or break your home buying journey. Here's a little tip for those in a know. Try to hold off on applying for new credit cards for about six to 12 months before you dive into house hunting. Every time you go for a new credit card, it results in a hard inquiry on your credit report, which causes a dip in your credit score. Now, one card might not be a huge deal, but if you're getting multiple cards back to back, those little dings can pile up. The good news is that the effect starts to fade after about six months. But it's not just about your score. Mortgage lenders have this important metric they look at called debt to income ratio. It's basically how they gauge if you can handle your monthly payments. Now, if you got a bunch of new cards tempting you to splurge, it could mess with your ratio, making lenders a bit wary. Keeping a lid on new credit card applications mean you'll likely keep the ratio steady, painting a better financial picture for yourself. And honestly, showing some restraint in the credit card department just looks good. It sends the message that you're the kind of person that plans and thinks things through. Lenders really love that. It makes them think, hey, this person is pretty responsible and they might be more inclined to give you that home loan, especially at a better rate. A bit of patience now could set you up for future success in the long run. And getting approved for a home loan is harder than you think with interest rates at a 20 year high right now. You know, I recently found out that almost 45% of people under the age of 34 get a gift or a loan from their parents to buy a house. I even had an older coworker who borrowed money from like three different people to help make his down payment for a personal slash investment property. But mixing money and relationships can be messy and awkward, right? That's why you can use Pigeon, my partner for today's video, to borrow or loan money with friends and family. In minutes, two users, a lender and a borrower can log on to the Pigeon platform, create a loan, agree on terms, create legal documents, and start an agreement. Pigeon will facilitate your payments as well as provide reminders, incentives, and track your transactions. Pigeon loans have no limits on the amount of money you can borrow and how long you can borrow it for. There's no credit check, no cash required, and no collateral to put up. It's just you and the person you're borrowing from. This year, the median home down payment was over $26,000. If you have 26 k just sitting around, then good for you. But for everybody else, this could be a great way to get into your dream home quicker than you ever expected. It's completely free to create an account, so hit the link below to start borrowing money from people that you know and trust. Now, just because you can get approved for a ton of cars at once doesn't mean you should. Managing those cars long term requires multiple skills you may not have acquired yet. When you apply for several cars in a short time frame, the risk of accumulating debt can spike in unexpected ways. First off, every approved application means you've got a higher total credit limit. While this sounds like a good thing, and it almost always is, it actually gives you more room to rack up debt, especially if you're not super careful with your spending. Then there's the allure of those tempting promotional offers. Many cars come with perks like 0% APR periods or big sign-up bonuses that require hitting a certain spending amount. If you're juggling multiple new card offers at once, you might find yourself spending more just to snag those bonuses. And let's not forget about the logistical challenges. Handling several car payments, each with its own due date and conditions, can be a juggling act. A missed payment here or there, or only making the minimum payments, can snowball into higher interest charges and growing balances. It's also way easier to lose sight of your overall spending when it's scattered across various cars. A bit of spending on each might feel manageable, but collectively you might overshoot your budget. Some folks might also open new cars with the idea of transferring balances from older, higher interest cars. It sounds strategic, and it can be, but without a solid plan to pay down the principal amount, it can turn into a never-ending cycle of shifting the debt. 
Lastly, there's a psychological angle to consider. Having a ton of available credit might give you a false sense of financial security, leading to thoughts like, I have so much credit, spending a bit more won't hurt. But that's how debt sneaks up on you. So while credit cards have their perks, diving into multiple new accounts too quickly can be a slippery slope if you're not aware. I heard someone describe managing credit cards as juggling chainsaws. Just like chainsaws, they're powerful tools that can earn thousands per year in rewards, build your credit score past 800, and give you safety benefits and travel perks, but you can easily run up high balances, miss payments, and cut down your credit score with those same cards. If you just dig a little deeper, you'll find that applying for cards has a hidden effect on your credit score, especially for those of us who are new to credit. So you know when you apply for a new card and the company does a final credit check? That's called a hard inquiry, and doing it too many times can actually lower your credit score a bit. From what I've found out, you can expect a temporary drop of between 4 and 10 points depending on your unique credit profile. These hard inquiries stay on your credit report for two years and they affect your score the more recent they are. I have three inquiries in the past year with the most recent being from two months ago and my FICO gave me a poor rating for this. So if you're the type of person who checks their credit score daily and you can't stand the thought of your score going down at all, then you'll wanna keep your new applications to an absolute minimum. Plus, if you're always opening new accounts, it makes your credit younger since it drops the average age of your credit history, which does have an extremely long-term effect on your score. FICO scores take into account how long your credit accounts have been established, including the age of your oldest account, the age of your newest account, and the age of all of your accounts put together. Now, imagine if you initially had four credit cards. Card one was 10 years old, card two was eight years old, card three was five years old, and card four at two years old. If you sum them all up and divide by four, then the average age of your accounts is 6.25 years. And let's say you decide to sign up for a brand new card, that'd be card five and it would be zero years old, that would drop your average age to five years. Now, if you decide to sign up for your sixth card and those two new cards would be zero years old, that would drop your average age to 4.17 years. The negative impact on each new card is lowered as you add more cards to the total. So you only need to worry about this when you're early in your credit journey and you have very few accounts opened. What you could do is prioritize signing up for more cards earlier on in your process to establish your age of accounts so later on down the line, you don't have to worry as much about new cards having a huge effect on your score. Another type of credit card that has no impact on your personal credit score is a business card. You can qualify even if you just have a side hustle like DoorDash deliveries. I made a whole cheat sheet for you of the 10 business cards that come with a 0% interest period for up to 18 months, and a few of the Chase cards even come with a $900 entry bonus right now. Definitely check that out in the link below. Sign-up bonuses have a flaw that makes them hard to hit and potentially cost you money. Because there's a trade-off that happens. You usually need to hit a certain spending threshold within a short time frame to snag those bonuses. Now, if you're applying for multiple cars in a short window, these spending targets can stack up and become a real challenge for you. For instance, imagine if one card asks you to spend $3,000 in three months and another wants you to spend $4,000 in the same period. Suddenly, you're looking at a hefty $7,000 to lay out in just three months to claim both bonuses. Now, we all have our own monthly budgets based on our incomes and regular expenses. If the combined spend from multiple cars pushes beyond your usual limits, you're in a tricky spot. You might either miss out on some sweet bonuses or feel pushed to stress beyond your budget. On top of that, managing several sign-up bonuses means juggling multiple deadlines and keeping a close eye on your spending for each card. In the rush to optimize your bonuses, it's easy to lose track and get overwhelmed. So while those bonuses can look super appealing on the surface, diving into too many offers too quickly can make it a challenge to truly reap the rewards. It's always a good idea to take a step back, consider your budget, and make sure you're not biting off more than you can chew. A lot of credit card issuers set limits on how many credit cards you can apply for within a month or six month period. If you break that limit, it can mean an automatic denial or even worse, lead to them closing your accounts altogether due to suspected fraudulent activity. With Chase, you can apply for no more than one personal and one business card within 90 days. Chase is known for shutting down people's accounts for applying too frequently. Amex, no more than two cars in a single day or three cars within three months. 
If you apply for two in a single day, then one of them will likely be put on hold. You'll have better luck combining a standard credit card with a charge card like the Amex Gold. For Capital One, you can only apply for one card every six months. They are super restrictive. And with Citi, you can only apply for one card, personal or business, every eight days and no more than two cards in a 65 day window. You can only apply for one business card every 90 days though. A lot of people don't know that when you use your credit card, call customer service, or even just log into your account, the credit card company is monitoring your behavior to make life-changing decisions. Applying for a ton of credit cards can look pretty suspicious to credit card companies and it puts a huge target on your back. From their perspective, it's not typical behavior for someone to suddenly want loads of credit all at once. This rapid fire application spree can trigger their fraud detection algorithms. These systems are designed to spot anything out of the ordinary that might indicate identity theft or fraud. So when they see a bunch of applications coming in, they might think, hey, is this someone trying to steal this person's identity and open cards in their name? And just like any other relationship, the one you have with your credit card issuer thrives on trust. If you're constantly applying for new cars, especially if it's with the same issuer, they might start to see you as a higher risk. They might think you're desperate for credit or that you're not a responsible user. Over time, this could lead to them offering you less favorable terms or even declining your applications. They could even start decreasing your credit limit on those cars you already have with them. And think about it, if you had a car with a $10,000 credit limit and they slash you down to $500, which happens more often than you think, by the way, they've minimized any potential loss they face if you were to max out the card and not pay them back. But they might not stop there. In some cases, if they believe the risk is too great, they might completely shut your account down. This is exactly what happened to Scott LeRae. Amex canceled all eight of his credit cards with no reasonable explanation. We can only assume it was a combination of him applying for new cars too often, making purchases in different countries, and taking out a huge cash advance. I know it sounds harsh, and it is. It's especially upsetting if you had that car for a while. Dealing with a total account shutdown is a nightmare you never want to be faced with. You can easily lose $50,000 plus in available credit overnight. And listen, you could do everything right, and this could still happen to you to some degree. That's why I always say you want to diversify who you bank with, especially across the large commercial banks. And a lot of people still don't know that most banks offer a specific higher level Visa card that comes with an absolute minimum $10,000 credit limit. So check out the next video where I show you five credit cards that guarantee a $10,000 starting credit limit. Thank you for watching.